So to turn your CAD drawing into an orthographic projection, and the first one I'm going to show you is how to use first angle projection, you need to open your drawing that you want to do the CAD orthographic of, and then go to File, Make Drawing from Part. And that will turn into a menu option for you to choose A3BSI. Um, if it doesn't default to that shorter list, you'll find it somewhere buried in this much longer list if you check the box hopefully it will be easier to find but also make sure that this box here is not checked you don't want it ticked uncheck it otherwise you'll end up with a box in the corner and a board around the page that you don't want I'm then going to click on OK and that sets up my page to A3 which is what I want and I can zoom in with the mouse wheel on the, the button to roll it to a slightly better position so I'm happy with that I can also check my sheet format so I could go over to the right here and enter a menu in here by right clicking and going to properties and that will bring up my sheet format but you can do the same by going down to here and having a look to sheet properties and you can see in here all the same options now at the moment it's set to a scale of two to one so that's full size times two so it's going to be twice as big and it's set to third angle so I'm going to change that to first angle projection and I'm going to leave it as a scale of 2 to 1 and I'm going to apply the changes and then I'm going to go to my standard 3 view click it once the lever drawing is open so it appears in this menu any other drawings that are open will appear there as well I've only got one open and I'm going to double click on that and it should put my lever into the drawing for me now at the moment it looks like it's the correct view it looks like it's the um, first angle because I've got a front view here this looks like a view from above but it's drawn underneath and this looks like a view from the left and it's drawn on the right but the scale is a little bit small so I'm just going to change this now at the moment if I go to right click and go to properties it's saying first angle it's saying two to one I'm happy with all of that if I click on the middle of the three views I can use the sheet scale so it takes the sheet scale from here rather than a custom scale which is defaulted in the box below. If I go to the sheet scale you'll notice it's suddenly doubled in size and I can now move that drawing around. You'll notice they move together because they're linked. Don't swap sides with them, make sure they stay the same way. And that is the correct layout for a first angle projection. Now a first angle projection means that if you were stood above looking down on the product you then draw that view underneath and if you were stood over here on the left hand side looking at the edge of that product you would see it like this but you would draw it on the opposite side the next thing to do is consider whether you've got any hidden detail on any of the drawings that need showing and there's a hole that passes all the way through the product here so on this view here I need to show that so I'm going to select this view and I'm going to go to this option which is hidden lines visible and you'll notice there's two dashed lines appear in line with this hole but actually there's lots of lines have also appeared over here which show all the various ledges and edges that I can't see because this slope is in the way so I'm quite happy with that and in fact looking at the scale I could probably go even bigger again so if I select that I'm gonna see if I can get to a 3 to 1 it doesn't give me a 3 to 1 to option in here so if I go to sheet properties I can try and change it in here and there we go that's a much nicer size it fills the majority of the page and I can get lots of measurements on there without them being too small and fiddly now I also want to put in a 3d view of the object in here so I'm going to go back to my right hand menu over here and choose my view palette and I'm going to find the isometric view and I'm going to bring that in now because of the scale of the rest of the drawing that's little bit on the large side so I'm just going to move these over slightly and this one I'm going to reduce down in size it doesn't need to match the scale of the rest of the drawing so I'm going to go over to the side having selected this I'm going to go to use custom scale I'm going to change that down back to two to one and that looks okay and then I'm going to turn it to a shaded view using this option on the left and that will then color it whatever color your drawing is in the other page that's okay I'm happy with that and I could now think about putting on my sheet information so I might do that next I'm going to go to annotation I'm going to go to note and I'm going to down here click once and I'm going to type in it's a lever it's a scale of 
three to one all dimensions will be in millimeters so I'm going to put all dimensions in millimeters and then what I can do there is I can double click to get in and change the settings I'm going to change the settings up to a decent sized font which is quite good you can also play around and perhaps go bold and I'm also going to put it to a more recognizable font so I'm scroll up and just change it to that I'm going to go bigger again I think that's still a little bit small and that's then all nicely laid out with a sheet title a 3d view showing what the actual object is and that's the page laid out now I can start applying measurements you'll notice that the circle has had a center cross put in to show that it is a, a center there in the middle of it um, and I need to now start thinking about how I'm going to dimension my product normally on an orthographic drawing the first thing you do is put some overall dimensions on so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a complete width on there so that's the widest part and that's 12 millimeters and then I'm going to put a total length on there which is from there to there and that's 73.25 millimeters and then it's going to have a thickness and that can go on any one of these areas where I can get hold of both there and there but three is a little bit small to fit in there I can take it over to the side but actually what I'm going to do you'll notice it's got two decimal places I'm going to change these so that they don't have the extra zeros and I'm going to do that by going up to the customize menu at the top go to options go to document properties go to dimensions and change my primary precision to none and you'll notice that all of the page all the numbers on the page will round up or down now if you've got a very critical measurement that happens to be a 73.5 or 12.5 and you need that measurement on there you can select an individual measurement and you can go over to the side here and you can actually change that and put one decimal place in and you can see there because of the other measurement that was there before you can go two decimal places there's no point on a school engineering drawing going to two decimal places because we can't work to that kind of tolerance in the school workshop so if you have numbers that are 0.5s then by all means pop them in you'll notice I've also put the measurements near the center of the lines in each case so as near to center by eye as possible and they're also a nice distance away from the drawing without being really silly silly and too far away and also the three now fits in there and that looks all quite neat so I've got my three main measurements on for the overall size of the product then I need to show some things like the step change between that surface and this surface so I can do that by clicking there and there but I'm going to drag that measurement to outside of the drawing the more measurements you have inside the drawing or too close to the drawing the more confusing it will become so I'm quite happy with that measurement and then there's a point here where a bend actually starts where the curve radius starts here and it's shown down here on this drawing as a line so I could on that particular one dimension from the line to the end and because it's smaller than the 73.3 I need to put that measurement inside and move that measurement a little bit higher up I could then put in the other measurements between that line and that line and ideally you want to try and get them in line with each other and if you zoom in you'll notice it suddenly starts to snap and also allows you to see what you're doing a bit more clearly I can then go from there to there that's snapped again I could go from there to there and that's snapped again and I can go from there to there and that should give me most of the measurements to be able to comfortably dimension it now this measurement here could have been below it could even be at the top so in fact what I will do is I'll get rid of that measurement and I'll pop that on between that end and that end up at the top where there isn't currently any measurements and that will just help spread the measurements around the pages slightly so I'm quite happy with that now I need to put some dimensions on for the center of the hole so I'm going to go back and click on the end line and click on either the cross or the circle if I click on the circle it automatically recognizes that I need a measurement to a center and a circle needs two measurements to show its center position so that's the distance from the end I also need the distance from the side that's showing me an angle so I'm going to press the escape key I don't want that so I'm going to click on the circle 
and again I've got this issue with a large and a small measurement so I'm going to bring the 6 to there and bring the 12 out slightly further. Now it's getting a bit close to the edge of the page and I've got plenty of space over here so if I go to my middle of my three views, this one that's in between the two other ones and select it, just turn my smart dimension off, that will allow me to just move that drawing in and it's starting to look quite nicely spaced on the page. So I've got the dimension of the centre of my circle but of course I also need the size of the circle so and the, of all the three drawings this is probably going to be the best one to use I could try and dimension it up here but actually it will show it as a dimension it will recognize that it's a circle so you'll see it puts the diameter sign on but actually it's easier to dimension a circle in a drawing where you can see it's clearly a circle so I'm going to put that measurement on this drawing and I'm going to have to bring that down. You'll notice this one's slightly different the way it's dimensioned it and I can bring that round anyway. I don't want to go and cross over loads of the other lines so it either needs to go in there as an option and I think that looks actually quite neat there so I'll pop it in there. Now you'll notice the arrowheads on this one are on the outside pointing in and on this one are on the inside pointing out. You can swap that by selecting the arrow and clicking on the dot and it will reverse the direction. The drawing guesses for you what you probably want. You'll notice most of them are on the insides. But if you find that on a smaller measurement it pops on the outside, it's done it down here as well. You can just swap it by selecting the measurement and clicking on the dot. And I think that's still acceptable with both the 4 and the 5. And the other ones, the 3 over here, I think you might find it's a bit too close if you do it. But even that is probably okay. But certainly you don't want them touching, so that's probably about as far as you would need to go. Now there are still some other measurements needed on here, I've got these radiuses that I need to put in. So again, using my Smart Dimension tool, I should be able to click on there and it will actually give me a radius. But you'll notice it shows the centre for the hole back here as well. Now it hasn't put a centre cross on, but that is something I can do um, if I need to. There's a centre mark tool here and if I click on the arc, it will put the centre of that circle in. I can do the same on this one and on that one and you can put various different positions in but actually it's not that critical to have those in because actually this is a flat surface that's been bent using the CAD program but it's not bad practice to leave it in so I think I will on this particular example so I'm going to click on that radius there that's quite a nice measurement there now I don't need to put this radius on because if this is three millimeters thick and these are parallel curves then the radius of this curve will be three more than this one so it will be a radius of 13. If you do want to put it on to prove the point then you can pop it in but it starts to get a bit over complicated if you put too many measurements in in small spaces but actually with a bit of moving you might just get it to work. It's getting a little bit too tight in there but probably move that one slightly there. So there are options to do that and I could do the same over on this one as well. So I've got my sensors in for my curves, I've got my radiuses in for my curves, but there are also tiny little radiuses on all the edges. There's also these corner radiuses here. So I'm going to pop a radius on this one. You'll notice it's radius 2. I don't need to radius that one as well. Someone reading this drawing will presume that if they're next to each other they look the same and they haven't been dimensioned differently that they are the same. This one, however, is probably different, and I can't put this dimension on the other drawing, so I'm going to have to do it over on one of these corners. So if I do that, it's getting a little bit complicated in there, look. So I could pop that on the other way, that way around. That might make it a bit easier. So I've now got my radiuses on on my big corners, my small corners. There's also a very small radius on there. Okay, but actually it's a huge centre on that radius. So I do need to put that in, but it's going to look ridiculously large, isn't it? So that's up to you. I'm going to leave that one off on this particular drawing. Um, at the notice has got nothing on here at the moment. So there are some measurements I probably need to put on here. I could, for instance, put the width of the whole product on this one. And that would mean that I could probably get rid of this one. And that makes the drawing a bit easier to read. There's not quite so many complicated lines on there. I could also put a centre mark or a centre line to show where the hole is positioned. So that there and that there are the two edges of this hole, hidden detail. So if I click on there and click on there, you'll notice it's put a small centre line in. I can click that centre line and stretch it. 
and that can allow you to use the dimensioning tool again to perhaps measure inwards to show that the hole is in the centre. Actually the 6 here is showing that anyway so that's not quite so critical. Now other things that might want to be shown, I've got the tiny radiuses on these thin edges here. So I've got that one there, smart dimension, click on the radius and I've got a very small radius of 1 on there. I've also got that little radius there or here which is also a radius of 1 so you can pop measurements on there. And I think if you try to put any measurements in between the horizontal lines on this drawing, it might just become overly complicated. So perhaps a couple of very basic measurements of all that's needed. I think I probably will also put the height on here. Otherwise I'm going to have a drawing with hardly anything on it. And that one there actually is one measurement I haven't put on anywhere yet. So that's the height from the very top to the very bottom. It would be the same as putting the measurement on from there. which you can, you can duplicate measurements around the drawing. Um, don't worry if you've put one or two on twice. Um, it's more important that they're there twice than not there at all. So there is an angle change between this horizontal side and this slope here. So I probably ought to put on that. So I'm going to click on there and there. And you'll notice it allows you to write in a dimension there. So there's 175 degrees between that line and this kink in this line here. You could also put a center line through the whole of the product because it is a mirror image product. So I could go center line and I could click on there and there and then that line could be stretched out. And that helps to show that it is a symmetrical shape because that's a center. And I think that's most of the measurements on this product. So I think for now, that's probably that shape done and I click OK and then that is ready to save so I would go to file and save as pop it on the desktop on this particular one lever save save all and then to insert this into your PowerPoint what I would do is I would go to file page setup make sure your size of your page setup is A3 because this is to do with um, printing now A4, A5, A6 are the only options at the moment quite sure why. Oh, it's because I haven't got an A3 printer at home. So that's why. So you need to check, check that to A3. Okay, it's not going to allow me to do that. Um, if I go to preview, you'll notice the drawing's too big to fit on. So because my printer hasn't got A4 paper, that won't work. But that's not a problem. But the best way of doing this is to go to File, Print Preview, and then do a screen clipping of the white area, and it comes into your document nice and clear and white. And then put something like a drop shadow around it if necessary. So I'm quite happy with that. And I'm going to stop there, and that's the end of the tutorial.